Okay, so now we've downloaded our footage that we need, we need to import it into iMovie. So let's go ahead and open up the software. If this is the first time you've run iMovie, then it will guide you through a quick setup. It's very intuitive, uh, easy to follow. Uh, once you've done that, you just need to create a new movie. So you can click on this plus button, click on movie, or you can do file new movie. Um, it's going to ask you what um, theme you want to use. Just press on no theme. We'll call this uh, Siphoned Week Zero Task. And from this point, iMovie will actually auto-save for you. So if we choose the uh, project here, and then we need to import the media. If you navigate to where we filed it away, and put mine in movies, siphon 2016 example footage, and then just select it all, and import selected. Now we have all the clips in the media browser, and in iMovie you can actually make selections within the media browser using this tool with the little yellow box next to the arrow. You just find where you want to start your clip, click and hold, and then drag to make a selection. I'm going to choose about that much, and then click on the middle of the clip and drag it down onto the timeline. Once it's on the timeline, you can make further adjustments to the clip's duration by just hovering over the end. You see the icon change there, and you can just pull the end in a little bit on both sides. This area is called the timeline, and it is universal across all different video editing platforms, and it contains this, the playhead and the viewer window in the top right references where the playhead is until I move away from it and it will reference where my mouse is or if I'm changing the duration of the clip on the timeline the viewer will reference where I'm cutting the clip to. So we've changed the duration of our clips, let's pull down a few more. Um, let's get a little bit of chai on the beach. Then we're going to get a little bit of this one and we're going to get some of this one too and then finally we'll pick up this one okay as you can see we're having to scroll backwards and forwards in order to see all our footage. If we use this tool, we can zoom out and get a broader view of our entire sequence. You can even zoom out a little more. And now we can begin to make some more precise cuts and really start telling a visual story. So we've got this wider shot of Jai kind of from the side. He lifts his binoculars up to his eyes. So let's bring this clip back to just after he's brought up his binoculars, just about there. You can see that the viewer in the top right is referencing where I'm making my cut to as I click and drag. So I'm going to cut to about there. And then if we put our playhead, this is a playhead around here, and then press spacebar, we can play through the cut. And you can see how it might begin to make sense if we just trim this one. Again, the, the viewer will start to reference where, the, where we're making our cut to. I'm going to cut to the playhead this time. Go back and make the play through the cut again. And there, the cut makes a lot more sense. It's because we're cutting on the same action. It's almost like we recorded the same scene with two cameras, one over his shoulder and one from the side, when in fact we did one shot after the other and just repeated the action of lifting the binoculars to his eyes. Um, so that's one way you can make a cut, and it's the, it's the most basic uh, way of editing in iMovie. If you need to cut to illustrative material or B-roll, if you imagine this is your main driving shot, um, or a story about Jai going to the beach to go bird watching, and then perhaps we can use this shot here and we'll actually layer that above 
our main shot because this is like an illustrative shot. We actually took this on a different day, but it's almost like if I play through the cut, it's almost like we're getting the perspective through Jai's binoculars and putting the illustrative material like this above on a second video track is really helpful if we want to change anything later like the duration of this clip or the duration of this clip for instance um, we can do so really easily without affecting the other one uh, and we can move it around um, as we see fit bear in mind that this little stick here down sticking out of the bottom of the plover clip indicates that it's sticking to the clip underneath so if we delete the one underneath both will disappear so if I just undo that with command Z um, and now if we play through the little sequence all together yeah it's making a lot of sense but there are a couple of audio issues now so if we zoom in on this clip using this tool here you zoom in this by the way will zoom in to wherever you've got the playhead so if you want to zoom into a section first move the playhead and then zoom in using this tool okay so our shot of the plover is really nice it gives us that perspective but the audio from it is being played at the same time as the audio from our main shot and we want to keep the audio from our main shot because that's the story that we're following. We're supposed to be with Jai looking through his binoculars with him almost. Um, and because this was recorded on a different day, much windier conditions, you can even see the plovers hiding behind a pebble to get out the wind. The audio really isn't usable and it's just distracting to our, the purpose of our story. So we can take the audio section of the clip, which is this blue bar underneath, and there's a black line running through it. If we hover over that black line, we get an up and down arrow symbol. We just click and drag and bring that down to 0%. And that basically mutes the audio, but it's still there. If we want it later, we can bring it back. If we want to get rid of it completely, we can select the clip with the yellow box around it, right click and detach audio. Now it's detached, we can unsync the audio so it plays at a different time to the video. We can adjust the duration of both independently, or we can just delete it altogether. And I think that's what we'll do. We just want to use the image from this clip and use the audio from the shot underneath. And that's another good reason why you'd lay, start to layer things. You can start to mix things together. So now we fix that audio problem, but there is a second. If we play through the cut again, that jump in the audio track and it's making us feel uneasy about the cut. Uh, visually it makes sense if we played this on mute it would make sense but we need to smooth out this audio transition and we will do that again by detaching the audio from both sides and now because we've shortened these clips we've got more audio to play with and we can start to run audio from one clip under the previous and this is a really useful to tool it's almost like we get your ears ready for the cut before it happens um, and you make that audible transli transition less noticeable so now we've pulled that audio clip underneath the outgoing video stream we can use this little dot here click and drag to the right and you can see what we're doing we're we're changing the volume, we're slowly introducing, we're slowly increasing the volume of the incoming clip and we're going to do the opposite for the outgoing clip. We're going to slowly decrease or ramp out the volume for the outgoing clip. This is really basic um, audio mixing and basically we can mix those two audio tracks before the visual cut happens and then it, hopefully it will all make much more sense. Yeah, you don't hear that audible jump anymore. So I think that's about it. I think that's all the tools that you'll need in order to make a basic sequence with the footage that we've shot and uploaded to Google Photos for you. Um, please get to know the software and just have fun playing around with the video clips. We just thought it'd really encourage you if you could build a video straight off the bat, even before the 
course has started so you can get used to the software but hopefully maybe inspire you to start thinking about your own videos and more creative ways that you can build a sequence than we presented here if you know the fundamentals. Anyway, have fun, good luck, and I'd love to know what you think about this week zero task during the week one uh, Google Hangouts. Uh, thanks for watching and I will see you in a couple of weeks.